Ooh, what's this thing over here collected dust for? Ooh. You are now listening to the Collecting Dust Podcast, your weekly escape for all things hobby and collecting. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the inaugural episode of the Collecting Dust Podcast, the weekly podcast where you can escape with all things hobby and collecting. I'm your host, McCavity, or Alex, whatever you want to call me is completely fine with me, and I must admit that this is, like I said, the inaugural episode, the very first podcast that I have ever attempted to do. Uh, There will be some structure. This first episode will not have uh, any sort of really structure, but I will kind of go over what we're thinking, what I'm planning. This is primarily my podcast, which every once in a while will host my wife as a uh, co-host, but uh, some of the times it will just be me, like today. So instead of having a traditional podcast like we normally would, I think today's episode is just going to be a kind of introduction to who I am, what you're listening to, and why you're listening to it. Well, I can't really answer that one, but we will kind of go over the structure as we go along here. There are a few things. This will not be your standard, typical podcast. This will be much more of a mini cast sort of thing uh, about collecting and hobbies. So if that's your sort of thing, please consider subscribing on your platform of choice. And let's have a conversation each week. That's the ultimate goal. That's what I want to do. And we just want to have fun with it. Uh, So the first thing... uh, that we want to talk about today will be uh, what will in the future be the announcements segment. Um, and I do actually have an announcement today. Due to being the inaugural episode of the Collecting Dust podcast, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. To any listeners out there, it doesn't matter where you're at. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're on uh, Apple Podcast, Spotify Podcast, if you're on SoundCloud Podcast, it doesn't matter. Uh, the announcement is for a giveaway. We're going to be doing a giveaway of a Pokemon Sword and Shield Battle Styles Elite Trainer Box to one person who leaves a five-star review and a comment with that review on any platform of your choice. Uh, The program that I use to upload all my podcasts will be able to pull all those reviews from all those different platforms. So uh, if you go ahead and uh, and leave a review and a comment, uh, you'll be thrown in a hat and drawn out to win. Uh, an Elite Trainer box for Pokemon cards if that's something that you're interested in. If you're not, you can just leave a comment that says, I'm not interested. Uh, This is just just for you, because I love you. And that would be good enough for me. Uh, So yeah, so the first thing that we'll do is the announcements in in podcasts in the future. Uh, Like I said, this will primarily just be an introduction to me. So hi, my name is Alex, a.k.a. McCavity Cat. That's what I'm known on uh, online as. Uh, in my gaming persona, and I was born in small town, South Dakota, a small town of about 493 individuals, and that includes all the stray cats running around. That's that's true. Uh, Census Bureau came in. They said, okay, good enough. 493. It's about 300 cats. Of course, I'm joking, but uh, there are a lot of cats running around there. Uh, 2009, I graduated from high school, so I did just kind of date myself there. Um, I was born in 1990, so I'm 31 years old. I'm an avid collector, an avid hobbyist, enthusiast. Uh, Just, you know, I like to have fun. I like to have fun, and as an adult, I like to spend my earnings on things that make me happy. Uh, So I started college in 2009, went to a tech school. Didn't really enjoy it. Not going to lie, I wasn't a big fan of schooling, wasn't a big fan of college, wasn't my cup of tea. Uh, So I attempted to go a few times, dropped out each time. 2015, I decided to go back. I got a degree uh, in IT. I now work for the Girl Scouts of America, Girl Scout USA. I am a Girl Scout, officially. I had to become a Girl Scout in order to work at the Girl Scouts. So yes, I can get you all the cookies you want. Uh... Yeah, so I, I work as a system administrator for the Girl Scouts uh, of America. It's a super fun job, super uh, fulfilling, and I love it. It's good stuff. Um, I am the only IT guy there. Uh, this isn't for the entire Girl Scouts across the nation. This is for the tri-state area being South Dakota, North Dakota, and Minnesota. I'm the only IT guy in that space, and uh, yeah, Uh, I like to think that they pay me pretty good, and as a result, I like to spend my earnings on things that make me happy. Uh, As a kid, I didn't really collect much, right? Because I'm a a child, okay? I'm a literal kid. 
I don't want to, you know, I don't think children have the brain capacity to uh, collect things uh, and not take them out of the box. I know, for example, I have some Power Ranger toys that probably would have been worth something today, uh, but I'm a kid, you know, and I want to play with my toys. I also had some little tractors and some Hot Wheels. Uh, which I think Hot Wheels is kind of a big thing now, too, isn't it? Or maybe not huge, but I, I know there are people out there that collect Hot Wheels. Don't lie to me. You can't. I can see right through you. So there's that. Um, it wasn't until I was about probably eight or nine years old when the Pokemon trading card game was released in America. It came to the West, and I know what a lot of people are saying. Due to the current climate in the collecting space, oh, of course it was Pokemon. Oh, of course it was Pokemon. Oh, Riding the coattails on the bandwagon. No, I can promise you that I was actually there at the beginning, at the inception of the United States, receiving the Pokemon cards. That's where I started. Started with base set, obviously moved on over to uh, Jungle and Fossil and base set two, and I was always chasing that Charizard, and I had a, uh, my best friend at the time's name was Jason, and my mom used to take me and Jason to a store in the mall about 10 miles away called On Q then Sam Goody, uh, and I'm pretty sure FYE bought him out from there, and we don't even have an FYE down there anymore, but we used to go up there every week, every Saturday for the Pokemon Trading Card Game League, okay? We used to get a, a book that you could put stamps in, and after you filled a page of stamps, you got a nice little pin of the gym badge, the original eight gym badge, okay? I am your collecting grandfather when it comes to Pokemon cards, all right? Not sports and things like that. I don't know anything about, about that space, but I can promise you I was there. This is not a bandwagon situation, all right? Uh, I did get all eight gym badges for the league, and I just found them a couple months ago, actually. I have all of them proudly displayed in my room, uh, which my wife probably thinks I am a massive loser. Uh, that's okay. Doesn't bother me whatsoever. I am a loser. I'm a nerd, and, and I'm a geek, and I just love fun stuff. Uh, after Pokemon, I transitioned over to Yu-Gi-Oh! as most did, I think, back in the day. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! is pretty good. Haven't, uh, you know, I actually bought some Yu-Gi-Oh! cards yesterday and opened them up, and I, I, I didn't feel what I felt when I started opening Pokemon cards again, but I definitely, there was something there, you know? I don't know what it is about Yu-Gi-Oh!, but uh, I hadn't opened any cards till I was, since I was probably like 12 years old. Uh, anyway, moving from Yu-Gi-Oh, I didn't transition like a normal kid, I believe, to Magic the Gathering, which I just feel like is the logical next step in the trading card game come up, the evolution, if you will. Uh, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, and then into Magic is, is what I feel like a lot of my friends went when we're talking about routes and things like that. Uh, but not me. Uh which is weird because I do look at magic as more of kind of like an adult version of Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, looking at the magic and the, and the art and the monsters and things like that. I kind of, you know, it's like, wow, this is, this is like for adults. Uh, but I didn't until recently. Me and my wife did start uh, collecting some magic a little bit recently. Uh, and like I said, I opened up some Yu-Gi-Oh cards the other day and it was, it was weird, but I kind of liked it. I got a couple secret rares out of the packs that I brought, but the, 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 I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh! secret rares are worth like two bucks, which is insane to me. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of where I got my start. You know, I started as a kid in the Pokemon space and I stopped collecting after Yu-Gi-Oh! I, I didn't really collect anything. I think I had a Vikings bobblehead uh, when I was a kid, but that was like the only thing like after this whole Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! phase. Uh, wasn't into magic, didn't really collect anything else until about 2017, my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, and my roommate at the time, uh, my cousin, uh, we decided to traverse to Walmart to pick up some Pokemon cards because me and him got big into the online Pokemon trading card game, which many of you Pokemon collectors know out there that each pack contains a code to get a free pack in the online game, which I wasn't going to sleep on. Okay, I wasn't going to pass on that one, all right? So we would do that. I still have them somewhere. They're laying around somewhere. I'm not sure where they would have got off to, but uh, they're around here somewhere with all my other stuff, my other thousands and thousands of Pokemon cards laying around. Uh, but yeah, so that was kind of like that. And then I got back into like collecting Pokemon again, like big time collecting physical Pokemon cards again in 2019. Nope, 20? 19? It was, it was right when Rebel Clash came out, basically. So it was kind of just like before all of this, right? It was kind of like before it got really, really bad. And it is really, really bad right now. Um, 
so yeah, I got in it to Rebel Clash, and it was kind of bad for a little while, and then it was kind of decent again, and uh, now it's just the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and it's sad, right? As a collector, as a as a true collector, someone who actually enjoys the hobby and enjoys the collecting and isn't just in it for the money, um, it's kind of it just feels like a bad time to start. It feels like a bad time to be here. I haven't got to buy Pokemon cards at retail uh, in the last two months, so I refuse to buy them. So I actually haven't been collecting Pokemon cards. Um, one thing that we do collect now, uh, me and my wife, in December of 2020. Uh, started collecting Funko Pops. Um, and I think what we're going to do, um, whether it be me or her on the podcast together, uh, the next segment after announcements uh, would be weekly pickups. Uh, and, you know, we're not really going format right now because, like I said, I wanted to kind of give an introduction to who I am, where I started. Um, but yeah. Um, so I want to do something like weekly pickups where we go over like what we got this week in the collecting space. It doesn't have to be Funkos, doesn't have to be Pokemon, it doesn't have to be other vinyls, it doesn't have to be anything like that, anything specific. Um, but weekly pickups for me this last week here, we picked up a uh, Simon Ghost Riley Funko Pop, uh, and I got a really good deal on it, about $40, currently sitting on eBay for about $80 to 100 and I absolutely love it because uh, growing up, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 was pretty much my entire life. Uh, I spent a lot of countless hours with friends uh, that I've never met just grinding. And, and I mean, it, it means a lot to me. That game, that game means almost as much to me as Halo 2. And Halo 2 is where I got my big start into gaming. But uh, yeah, so I, I mean, when I was a kid, I, after Yu-Gi-Oh, I kind of stopped collecting and started gaming. And we'll talk about, we'll talk about PC gaming and other sorts of gaming and stuff uh, on this podcast as well, because this is a podcast for all hobbies. And one of my main hobbies is a PC gamer, PC enthusiast, build computers. Super fun. Uh, but yeah, I kind of went off on a tangent there. So we picked up this uh, Simon Ghost Riley. I got it for 40 bucks. So we got a really good deal on it. Absolutely beautiful. I have him sit him up, sitting up on my shelf in a hard stack. I love him. It's great. Uh, my most prized possession, my most prized Funko Pop that I have currently. Uh, I'm a big Walking Dead fan. Okay. And you don't know that about me yet, but you do now. All right. I'm a big Walking Dead fan. I'm a big Norman Reedus fan. Boondock Saints was everything to me uh, when it came out. It was, it's still to this day, probably my favorite movie of all time, the original Boondock Saints. It was such a cult classic, such a beautiful movie. Um, and I just love Norman Reedus. Uh, so I actually do have a signed Daryl Dixon Funko Pop from Norman Reedus for a season 10 Daryl Pop. And like I said, it's my prized possession is something I will never get rid of. I will never sell it. I, I absolutely love it. And I'm in awe literally every time I see it. Uh, so yeah, so I want to go over weekly pickups in a segment, kind of what we got. If we got more than one thing, we can kind of share it, maybe have a little battle if it's my wife on, if not, I'll just kind of tell you what I got, what I paid for it, uh, why I bought it, why I like it, that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, I think I think like a battle with her would be cool. Like, oh, this pops way cooler than yours, you dummy. You know. Um, after weekly pickups and and stuff like that, I want to pop on over to a segment that I call heinous hobbies, and this is something that I want to. Um, I kind of want to just have a little segment where I go over something that's extremely dumb in the collecting industry, collecting hobby. Because uh, there are a lot of dumb people out there. Okay, there are a lot of people scalping. There are a lot of people being just jerks. There are a lot of people doing some real stupid things. Um, and so for this week, I just wanted to talk about. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the whole Target situation uh, and how Target has announced they will temporarily stop selling trading cards. It's coming from CNN. Uh, they're going to stop selling trading cards of both the sports and the Pokemon variety in stores. Uh, due to a recent dispute at one of its locations, okay? Uh, a Target spoke person, spokesperson said uh, last week that the safety of our guests and our team is our top priority. That's what they said to a statement in CNN. Out of an abundance of caution, we've decided to temporarily suspend the sale of MLB, NFL, NBA, and Pokemon trading cards within our stores effective May 14th. The cards will still be available online. So, way to go, guys. You ruined it. Basically, what happened, if you didn't know, uh, last week, uh, over a dispute for trading cards, okay, just take that in, this is where we've, this is where we've come, this is where we are, a dispute over trading cards led four men to beat a man 
and pull a gun on him. Details as to why, I'm not sure, but just think about that, okay? Just think about that. Four men, men, I will say it again, men, four men, beat a man and pulled a gun on him. And this is why things in the hobby space are so terrible. This is what happens when you have celebrities come into the game and have their reach of 50 million people, and these people see that you can make money, and they decide to ruin it for everybody. Now, let me let me be clear on something. I'm not gatekeeping Pokemon cards or trading cards or sports cards or anything like that, Funko Pops. I'm not gatekeeping, okay? I'm not gatekeeping Logan Paul or Logic or anybody like this. I welcome you with open arms. Welcome to the community. Collecting is a super fun thing to do. I absolutely love it. Uh, the problem is, is when all these people that actually have no interest in the hobby can only see that you can make money from it. And guys, this isn't just Pokemon cards or sports cards. This is graphics cards. This is Xboxes, Playstations. This is computer parts in general. I mean, wood, for God's sakes. Wood. And it's not everybody's fault, right? It's not any one person's fault. Obviously, the pandemic played a huge role in this as well. I mean, Carta Monday and all the other printing facilities had to close down for a certain amount of time, and then they got super swamped behind, and now they can't catch up. And they probably likely won't catch up until 2022 or 2023. It's just the way that it is. And it's just kind of the way that we have to deal with it. But yeah, I just thought that was kind of nuts. Like, you're a grown-ass man, okay? And I'm sorry, I want to keep this podcast as uh, as family-friendly as I possibly can. Uh, but four grown-ass men beat another man and pulled a gun on him over trading cards. Trading cards, Okay over what would be considered a childish item to, to some, probably people that are on the outside looking in. That's bananas to me. I, I absolutely, I just can't wrap my head around how these people are allowed to be out in public. I just, I just don't get it. Um, after heinous hobbies, I want to pop on over to some sort of random thing for the week, maybe an interview. I do have uh, a couple friends that I want to get on here. One of them being, um, Already Ben Slinky on YouTube. You can check out his channel. Uh, just search up Already Ben Slinky. He does a lot of really cool um, mini games with Pokemon cards, and the prizes are all Pokemon cards and Pokemon card packs. We've played like Pack Jack, which is like Blackjack with Pokemon cards, and you could win. I mean, I won some graded cards, some sealed tins, some good stuff. So go follow him if you haven't over on YouTube. I want to have him on. I want to have some other collectors on. I don't know who I want to try to get yet, but this is kind of the segment where we will have an interview slash some random thing if we don't have an interview. And then I want to tell, uh, try to tell a funny story uh, at each uh, at each episode. And I don't know if I'll be able to or not, but I want to try. Um, and so th this, oh, I want to preface this too by saying this podcast is going to be very short. I think I said that in the beginning, uh, maybe 20 to 30 minutes, depending uh, this is also one of three planned podcasts for my wife and I's new podcast network that we wanted to start, just to, just to try it, just to have some fun, uh, and we're going to call it Cancelled Cult Productions, okay? C-A-N-C-E-L-L-E-D, Cancelled, I don't know how to spell, Cancelled Cult, C-U-L-D, T, C-U-L-T, like I said, I don't know how to spell, Productions. Uh, I will have a YouTube set up by the time that this goes, um, that this podcast goes live and all full episodes of podcasts, including video, not for this one, but for most of the other ones will, will be uploaded to YouTube as well. Uh, so you can subscribe to us over there and as well as canceledcultproductions.com or canceledcult.com. I'll update you in the next episode as to what that is, uh, but don't try to go buy it because before I upload this, I'm going to make sure that I snag that domain name. Uh, so Maybe I'll buy both of them, and then we could just have them re redirect to each other. Uh, either way, I'm going to do Collecting Dust uh, with my wife every once in a while. She'll be on here. Uh, my wife wants to do a podcast with her sister where they just get inebriated and talk about some real shit. Uh, so that one's going to be really interesting. And then uh, my wife wants to do one with me where we are going to discuss... Uh, each week, we want to re research a conspiracy theory. And one of us has to argue why it could be real, and the other has to refute that argument and kind of prove why it isn't. Uh, and we're going to have it set up kind of like a courtroom, like each side will have opening statements, and then at the end of it, the audience will be the ones to decide, they'll be the jury, who's right. Uh, so that one will be exciting. 
So yeah, canceled cult productions fully underway. I'm super excited. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, so I, w- I would want to tell a funny story. So the funny story that I have today, and I don't know if it'll be funny to everybody, but I want to tell a story of how I got my first base set Charizard for Pokemon back in the day. Uh, I did mention earlier on that I had a friend named Jason. My mom used to bring us to OnQ slash Sam Goody slash FYE, whatever you want to call it, uh, for Pokemon League. Look, man, when I was a kid, everybody was trying to pull that Charizard. Everybody. And I remember when Jason pulled his. I was sitting in the back seat with him. We got packs. It was just an eruption of emotions. Raw. It was beautiful. Um, I never got that because I never actually pulled a Charizard myself. Which is a bummer. I never pulled it. But just the feeling. Okay, and that's why I hate scalpers so much. And we're going to talk, we're going to rag on scalpers a lot on this show. So if you're a scalper, you just turn the podcast off because we don't want you here anyway. Um, I'm going to rag on you so hard. Uh, But a lot of scalpers will say that, oh, you can't use kids as as an excuse as to why you're upset that we're manipulating the market. And you most certainly can because I remember the feeling of him pulling the Charizard. I could only imagine how I would feel if I pulled it myself. The feeling that a kid can get for getting something like that, they get so excited. This, uh, I get excited, right? When I pulled the shiny Charizard V out of Champion's Path and the rainbow Charizard, when I pulled both of those same day, 15 minutes apart from each other, I mean, I was very excited. I could imagine that if I was a child, oh, it would have been absolutely nuts. And you can't tell me that a kid, a single child, could afford to pay $40 for three packs of Pokemon cards. So don't even give me that shit. I don't want to hear it. I digress. So he pulls the Charizard. I'm trying to get a Charizard, man. I'm trying to pull it. Can't do it. Every week, I'm trying to find somebody at Pokemon League to trade me, and nobody will. One day, my mom brings us up there. I have been trying to trade for a Charizard for a few months, probably, and I was never able to get anybody to trade me. So I had my deck that I played with, and I had my binder full of junk cards, because I always got a pack when I was there, so I just wanted my binder there, probably, to, to store it. Found a kid that wanted to trade. Uh, he wanted to trade his Charizard. And, damn it, I have my junk binder. So I'm trying to get a, a trade out of this kid, and I, I'm, I'm doing the shadiest, worst trade that you could ever possibly imagine. I'm pulling out, like, 15 commons, like a ton of uncommons, and just trash non-hollow rares that I just had, like, 45,000 copies of. And... You know, I'm, I'm putting them all out there in a pile just for this one card. Like, I just want this one card. I'll give you all of this. And this kid is like, no, nah. he's like cringing a little bit, right? Which it's cringe worthy. The trade was bad. I fully, I fully admit that. Um, but, you know, he pulls back and he's like, nah, I don't, I don't think I could do this. And, and out of the blue, Jason, my rock, my savior, comes out of nowhere, pretends not to know me. Okay. Next level intellect for a, for a small kid, right? For like a nine-year-old kid. Just 10th level intellect. You know, you DC fans know what I'm talking about. 12th level intellect. Either way. Pretends not to, not to know me. Starts up a conversation with us. What are you guys doing? Oh, we're trying to make a trade. Uh, but he doesn't want to trade his Charizard for all these cards. Oh, that seems like a really good deal. Wait, what? The kid says. What? Jason goes, yeah. I've, I've traded Charizard for way less than that. Like, way less than that. Charizard ain't shit no more, dude. Charizard ain't anything. He ain't the big boy on campus. We don't like Charizard no more. The kids, the Kid Legion Army have spoken. We don't like Charizard anymore. Of course, this is a lie. Everybody still loves Charizard to this day. But he is just giving the kid the spiel. Just ripping into him, letting him know. This card sucks. Just do the trade. It's such a good deal. He whittles him down. The kid actually hands me his Charizard for junk rares, 15 commons, and like seven uncommons. It was banana bonkers. At the time, though, we didn't know that we didn't know what we know now, right? We didn't know that this this potential first edition Charizard trade was going to be, you know, a, a, if it was a 10, like a four hundred thousand dollar ordeal. I don't even know if it was first edition or or if it wasn't a first edition, like twenty thousand dollar ordeal. Today, you know, obviously we didn't know that. Um, but still couldn't believe it because Charizard was the cream of the crop, the creme de la creme, the Chick-fil-A of Pokemon cards. Let's be honest. Um, and yeah, he got him to trade it. Uh, we, we did the deal 
And it was still like two hours before my mom was going to come pick us up. But to prevent this kid from going back on his word, from from changing his mind, we actually just left the store. Nine and ten years old. We just left the store. We left the mall. We ran to like some restaurant across the street in some shady neighborhood and just sat there. Ten years old. Sat there, waited for my mom to come and pick us up. So we had a clean view of the, the parking lot, but this kid wasn't getting his Charizard back. And I feel kind of bad about it. Uh, because of obviously what happened today, you know, and into today, the, the day and age that we're in is what I mean, uh, with prices and how things are so absolutely bananas. Uh, but yeah, so that's my funny story for this first episode. At least I, I think it's funny. Uh, in a next week episode, I'm going to hold off on this one, but a next week episode, I will, uh, I will tell you how I ended up losing that card and pretty much other, uh, every other vintage card that I have ever owned. Uh, but I might have a lead on that. So I will keep everybody privy of the situation. <laughs> After the, what was that breath, dude? Hello? I'm leaving that in there. I was going to cut that out, but uh, I think I'm going to leave that in there. After the funny story, we'll get into the the closing statements, uh, end out the podcast. Like I said, this podcast is only going to be about 20, 30 minutes long. So um, yeah, and that's kind of how we'll structure it. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to this introduction of what I want to do, and, and I hope that you'll continue to come back and take a listen. Uh, if anybody wants that uh, that ETB, go ahead and leave a review and a comment, and I'll throw your name in a hat, and we can get going. Get going on it that way. Uh, but yeah, this has been the first episode of the Collecting Dust Podcast. If you enjoyed it, again, subscribe, and I will see you guys next week. I'm signing off. You take care. <laughs>